So I'd first like to start off by asking, how do we make sense of disorders? Well, usually diagnosis is guided by the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, known as DSM for short. This handbook is very useful in understanding and treating disorders, but it is often used as a primary answer to all that we see, which is a problem. And this brings me to my main question. Can this handbook be universally applied? This is essentially the question that is being explored in Crazy Like Us by Ethan Waters, where Waters argues that as people explore mental health, they are consequently influencing the expression of mental health across cultures through globalization. And because of this, as he says, we are homogenizing the way the world goes mad. I have to focus on the case study that is presented in the first chapter of the book, where it talks about patients in Hong Kong that were emaciated to the point that their bodies were skeletal-like, and some people went into the situation thinking or assuming they had anorexia nervosa. Summarized, anorexia nervosa is an extreme restriction of calories and is usually motivated by a fear of weight gain alongside a distorted image of the body. Dr. Sing Lee was a psychiatrist that went into the situation and he immediately realized this wasn't anorexia as it was defined by the DSM. For one, these women were aware of their extreme state of the body, they were not consciously restricting their food intake, and they had no fear of weight gain. They simply said they were not hungry. So what does this mean? To have to find answers, Dr. Lee turned to medical historian Edward Shorter, who compiled the history of anorexia. In the patients that Shorter saw in the 1800s, they were very similar to the patients Lee was seeing. And most importantly, their symptoms were felt somatically, such as refusal to eat due to painful digestion. As our textbook cultural psychology notes, somatization refers to symptoms being primarily physical rather than psychological. Furthermore, these symptoms were interestingly very similar to the symptoms of hysteria. Hysteria was a popular diagnosis for women and was tied to many symptoms, and these symptoms were credited to the uterus wandering around the body and bumping into bodily organs. In hindsight, does this make any sense? No, not at all, but moving on. Symptoms of hysteria were eventually narrowed down and they fell under what would be called anorexia. And as Shorter argues, people rely on these somatic symptoms to express their psychological suffering. And this makes sense with cultural context. This is all to say that knowledge of someone's cultural background may be critical in understanding people and the disorders they may be suffering from, but unfortunately mental health is treated as being separate from any cultural influences. This is where I'd like to pass the question on to you. Do you think we can be better in recognizing cultural significance when it comes to helping people, and what can we personally do to ensure this more culturally conscious approach?